once you know that you can manufacture this product and sell it on Amazon, you will need to create a product listing. So what I do from there with chat GPT is I'll come back over to the Amazon tab and I'll look for one of these products that have a good review count. It looks like this one it's probably got the best and I'll open it up. I'll look at the product, it has a low review count. And I will come down here to the ASIN number, which is just the SKU that Amazon assigns to your product. And I'll grab this ASIN. And I'll actually take this over to Helium 10. So in Helium 10, they've got a bunch of different um, tools that you can use. You can see here, black box, that's gonna be product research. You can look for trends. You can uh, save the products and come back to them later to look at. Frankenstein is a keyword processor. So once you find the keywords, this is where you break them all down. Scribbles helps you to write your listing with those keywords. Index checker, just to see if the keywords you're trying to rank for, your product shows up in those searches. But what we're gonna actually do is we're gonna use Cerebro. Cerebro is just gonna go out and find the different keywords that we want to place in our listing to be able to rank properly for those categories. So type in the um, ASIN number and do get keywords. This is gonna analyze the listing and break everything down for us so we know the traffic, volume of traffic, you know, um, the keywords around the product, what people are searching for to find this product. And you can see here, removable key, uh, piano keyboard note. Note piano, piano note chart for keyboard, removable piano key keyboard, piano key guide, key, uh, silicone sticker. That one, I mean, that's a little bit more general. It's, I, I, don't, I don't know if I necessarily go for that keyword. I'd mainly go for like, you know, silicone sticker for piano or piano key silicone sticker, something like that where you're including piano. So you're more targeting those type of people. Uh, I mean, you think about silicone sticker, how many are there? You know, you don't want to be in the mix of that. You want to be able to target who you're trying to target. Um, so you want to find the keywords that are relevant. Once you find a little bit here, you'll see like removable piano keyboard. Let's, let's go with removable piano keyboard sticker. So you can actually come to chat GPT and you can do a new chat and type in a description for a keyboard removable sticker. And this is gonna write a product description. Now, it may not be fully optimized. It may not be 100% you know, complete, what this is doing is trying to get you a framework that you can build on. So you may want to look at it, read it, make sure that everything makes sense. Um, and then from there, improve it. So what it came up with is a keyword removable sticker is a thin adhesive label that can be placed on the keys of a keyboard. I mean, that's pretty good. The stickers are typically made of a durable non-slip material and are designed to be easily removed without leaving any residue. Okay, that's great. They can be used to customize the appearance of a keyboard or to add markings or symbols that help users when typing or programming. Okay, this is a great example. So when you when it says add markings or symbols that help users with typing or programming, technically we're not typing or programming. So you might wanna change that to help piano players when learning to play the piano. That would complete that sentence a lot better than talking about typing or programming because so we're not doing either. Um, then it talks about the keyboard removable stickers are often used by language learners. See, that wouldn't apply as they can use to add characters of a different alphabet or language to the keys of a keyboard. Um, I mean, you might be able to switch that up a little bit and say some people will even list the um, note on the keys so that you can memorize the keys with finger placements. I don't know. Um, they can also be used to add special symbols or characters used in programming language. Yeah, I would take that up too. So that gave us a little bit of a basis, uh, uh, a base to work with. Um, so what I would do is I would actually copy this and take it back to, to Helium 10. So once you've filtered through all your keywords, 
which I do have a training on that. If you want to go through all the different keywords, I can definitely show you how to do that. Um, and once you have your keyword list, you'll take it into scribbles. So we're going to go ahead and just jump straight into scribbles um, on this product example. All right. So now that scribbles has loaded, we would take that description and you'd come down here and type it into a description. I mean, you may use it for a bullet point. It just depends on where you want to put that. So I got to change this to help people learn how to play the piano. So do pay attention to the character count. I mean, descriptions, you want them a little bit longer. You can go up to 2,000 characters on that. Um, but once you have that there, you can actually um, grab another keyword. So you can come to Cerebro again and look at the other keywords that it's ranking for. Um, I saw one here a second ago, removable piano key labels. Okay, that's a good one. So then we can come here and say, write a description about removable piano uh, stickers. Uh, you might want to narrow that down a little bit more. The stickers. Using the keyword, come back to Cerebro. And it was removable piano key stickers. And have a type. Okay, so it looks like it's using a good chunk of what was used previously, but it's got a little bit, a little bit different content in here. So what you would want to do is look for what you type. So removable piano key stickers. There's my keyword. Um, this might be a good bullet point. So what you could do is come in here and for, let's say like bullet point one, you can put piano key stickers, and then you just put in the content that you pulled. Now, just remember over here where it says add phrases, this is where all your keywords will be listed once you broke them down. I'm not actually gonna go through that process and break down all the different keywords. But I'll show you how it works. So I carry them over to here. I'll have um, piano keyboard stickers for beginners. Um, you could have piano key stickers, removable piano um, stickers, removable piano key stickers. You get the you get the idea. So once you have your content in here, you actually click apply. And when you're typing, it's gonna show all the different keywords that have been used and cross them off on your list over here. So your words, you'll see I've used piano, stickers, key, stickers, um, keyboard, but beginners is one I haven't done. So you could always create a title, which a lot of times I'll look at what other people are doing because um, they're targeting some of the main keywords already. So I would come into Amazon and look, my guess is removable piano keyboard note labels is gonna be a big keyword that they're trying to target. So I may even start my title with that specific keyword. Piano keynote stickers. Uh, I mean, that's pretty close. Uh, labels. Um, and then you can continue your title from there. So, um, you know, I might put for beginners, um, easy to peel and stick to the piano keys without leaving any type of sticky residue. residue. Um, you know, what's another keyword that we can target? Come to Cerebro, Cerebro, labels, piano key labels. So they use labels a lot. We've got labels here. We've used beginners, removable piano key note labels. Um, you could put something like 
learn to play the piano quickly with these easy to read laminate piano key labels. So we'll put something like that. So that would get your title right there. So you would keep doing that till you have your bullet points, your description, and then your search terms. You definitely want to come into Cerebro. You can filter this um, based off of the IQ score or search volume. A lot of times if it has a high uh, IQ score, it's going to have a high search volume, but not always. So it looks like, you know, a good keyword is Yamaha keyboard. Definitely don't use that. The reason why is because Yamaha is a brand name. You don't want to use another brand's name within your, your listing or content. Ca uh, Casio, same thing. But it looks like keyboard piano um, is a good key keyword. So you might want to put that in your search terms, possibly. Um, but I would take it a little bit further and do like keyboard piano sticker. Uh, maybe do keyboard stickers, you know, you get the gist. So you only want to put a couple in there. So you want to get your five bullet points. You want to get a description and your search terms and your title. Make sure all of that content is filled out. Once you have all this information for your listing and it matches up to the keywords you're wanting to target, um, you can actually save this right here and come back to it later. I always try to export it, download it, you know, save it somewhere else, just in case something happens like your computer crashes or the software goes down, you still have your listing. Now, if you're gonna go ahead and list your product right away when you create that listing, then you would take this to Amazon and transfer the content over to create that listing. 